She walked slowly towards Rosa's house, feeling every step that she took away from Iago. Even though it was late morning already, she did not see many people on the streets, and those that she did see looked at her in a peculiar manner, as if she was the reason for their lives about to change. <sighs> she smiled to herself and chided herself on her paranoia. Apparently, the novelty of her being the new arrival in town had wore off, and the people of the town were just being their ordinary selves, nothing more. She only felt the coolness in their demeanour as she had become accustomed to the attention that... that's all. The sun did seem cooler on her skin, though. Even though it was as bright as all the other days that she had been in that place. She shook that off as paranoia as well and proceeded to Rose's doorway. She noticed that her car was gone and thought that a strange occurrence but quickly brushed it off. She did have a rather bad memory and probably parked it in another area. Entering through the main door, she noticed that the house was abnormally quiet and went looking for Rose, not calling in case there was a prayer meeting or some other sort of somber occasion that she would be interrupting. She saw Rose standing at the kitchen and opened the door a bit wider. Good morning, Rose, she greeted, but... Her greetings were met with silence. Finding that strange, she walked up to Rose and saw that Rose seemed to be in a trance. Unable to get anything out of her, she looked in the direction that Rose was looking and gasped in fright. Outside, on the tree, was a body, burned black, Small sections of clothing that had not been burnt flapped in the breeze while the body rocked to and fro, hanging from the neck. Oh my god, Rose finally said softly. No, no, Sean said in disbelief. No, that cannot be. Hyperventilating, she ran outside, followed by Rose calling her back. She reached the tree and collapsed on her knees, tears streaming down her face. Alex! Sean cried. Why, Alex? His mother said that he felt the need to escape for many years, Rose said. We all warned him of the dangers, but, well, I suppose that he needed to. Everyone's blaming me, aren't they, Rose? Saying that if I married him, he would still be here. Rose was silent, which only made her feelings of guilt stronger. Don't matter what others are thinking, dear. You were right to stand up for yourself as you did, and I'm proud of you. Alex was proud of you too, and loved you even more for it. Sean knelt there and, for some time, wept bitterly. And even though she expected Rose to leave her, Rose stayed in silence with her. Finally, Sean found the strength to think rationally and feelings of vengeance rushed through her veins. Rose, I know everything. We have to talk. Rose helped her up and walked arm in arm towards the house. She led her to the bedroom and they both sat in silence on her bed. I was going to make a clever comment about you not coming home last night, but then I looked out the window and I saw him. So, you said you know everything? 
How's that? Sean told her of her dreams and of her conversation with Iago. He says that he knows a way of killing her and that he was on his way to speak to the town council. Rose breathed deeply and looked at her for some time. I suppose he's ready for it now that you're here. He hasn't tried for centuries. He didn't have the heart to attempt anything as he knew that he would be killing innocent people in the process, but... Now you here, and it's all different. All different? Um, how do you figure that out, then? I assume he told you about his ancestry and the power of the dragon inside of him. The... the Reich? Oh, for the life of me, I could never remember that name, no matter how many times he mentioned it to me. Yes, the Dreig. The one reason that his father and brother failed was that they had nothing to live for. Prince Iago, however, has found his reason to live, but that's his love for you. Making him stronger than his predecessors, and he knows this, but... Rose, what is it? If he can kill that bitch, then let it be over with. Sean could not control her anger anymore. You've seen one death, my dear, and that's why I understand you so passionate, but... I've been here for 150 years, and I have seen many things. Alex had been here for 70. One simply sees and is happy to be alive, that's all. Prince Iago has been able to keep the demon in the book until now, but as you can see, her powers are increasing. And I fear that our beloved prince will have to battle her. But that's a good thing, right? Rose took Sean's hand and looked deeply into her eyes. I feel that your love for him is strong, and his love for you is equally strong. With love like this, the dragon inside of him will be manifested, and he will defeat the demon by being able to draw her into him. He told me this many, many years ago, but did not know if he had the strength to contain her. Now he obviously does have that strength with you by his side. Once she is defeated, we will all be released from this hell, but for ultimate defeat, he will have to kill himself with the demon inside of him. Rose, what are you saying? That Iago will have to die to set me free. No, no, I won't allow it. Maybe you people are sick of this life and are willing to sacrifice him, but I won't allow it. Sean jumped off the bed and ran out of the house, slamming the door behind her. Rose knew that she had done all she could. She had told Sean the truth, and whatever unfolded would simply unfold. Whatever happens, she would be happy as long as Sean and Iago were happy. Goodness knows he needed it. With all his 350 years of solitude and suffering, he needed it. Sean ran to the town hall. Iago said that he would be there and she expected to see him as she had seen him that day. Standing in his perfect posture, speaking earnestly to the council, deep concentration on his face. She opened the doors rapidly and readied herself to explain her intrusion, but the hall was empty and silent. Swearing softly to herself, she ran around the town hall, up the path to Yago's house and opened the door without bothering to ring the doorbell. He was in the living room, paging slowly through an old book. <laughs> Iago, I can't let you do this, she said, completely out of breath. He didn't look up from his book. What choice do I have? You've heard of what happened to Alex. She's coming back, Sean, and I'm the only one who can stop her. 
I saw what happened to Alex. I saw it from Rose's kitchen window. He used my car to escape, so it's my fault that this happened, not yours. You should not be doing this. He looked at her sternly. Don't ever blame yourself for such acts of evil. You are not to blame. She is. Even so, I can't let you sacrifice yourself. I, I know I've just got to, I've just got to know you, and even though I know I'm selfish, I can't let you go. You are the most amazing man that I've ever met, and will ever meet. I can't let you do this. Sean was sobbing uncontrollably now and dropped to her knees on the floor in front of him. Yoko looked down, devoid of emotion. She is getting stronger, Sean. Soon, not even the book will be able to contain her. There is no escape from this place unless someone delivers the town from her, and if not me, who? She is capable of many more evil things, and I cannot let her get her hands on you. I'd rather die trying to defeat her than let her harm you. Iago, she said, looking at him. She took the book from his hands and placed it on the floor next to her. He looked at her. Maveti Elibera. That's what she has ordered me every single day for three hundred years. Maveti Elibera. You will release me. Now I will not just release her, I will bind her forever. Iago. This time we will be victorious, he rambled on, his beautiful eyes distant, calculating, contemplating, hurting. Iago, she whispered as she kissed him. He kissed her passionately, everything he ever felt for her, those past days being released in that one moment. Finally, they hugged each other, simply enjoying the closeness. I love you, Sean. Do you know how long I've been waiting for you? (laughs) Centuries, she joked. Centuries, he said, as a matter of fact. You have given me the strength to do what I never thought possible. I wish you didn't have to do it. I wish I didn't have to either. He pulled apart from her, held her at arm's length and looked into her eyes. I promise you, when all this is over, I will look for you. Wherever you are in this world, wherever you are in whatever existence, I will find you. We will be together. I promise. He wiped a tear that fell over her cheek. You'd better. Otherwise, I will come after you. And believe me. They will be held to pay when I find you. He kissed her again. I don't doubt that. Go now, before I change my mind. She walked out, but didn't go very far. Hiding behind one of the trees in the path, she she waited for him to come out the door. If she couldn't be beside him, she would be close to him when he battled that thing. Eventually, he exited, carrying a small box that was elaborately decorated with wooden carvings. He walked slowly, but 
post at the tree where Sean was hiding and she held a breath in case she gave her position away. He stood there for a moment, breathed deeply and smiled. Then walked further down the path towards the hall. Had he seen her? Had he heard her? She, she didn't think so. So she walked after him, careful not to make a sound. She could hear his heavy footsteps in the distance, every step, not seeming ominous, but hopeful. A crowd had gathered at the town hall and Sean hid behind the building, out of sight. She was shorter than the average persons and could fit into any crowd without being seen, but she didn't want to take her chances. She was the new arrival and surely someone would spot her. She didn't want Tiago to know that she was there and he would most probably lose his nerve or change his mind and all would be lost. Iago placed the case on top of a wooden stand which had a dark red portion of velvet draped over it. He lifted his hand, waited for silence, before speaking in a powerful voice. You have all heard the rumours about Fantoma being stronger, and I am afraid to say that those rumours are true. The crowd mumbled and gasped among themselves. He waited patiently until there was silence again. In the case before me is the book in which she is trapped. The Cartilla. Then why don't you just destroy it? One of the townsfolk called. My father tried and my brother tried, but they only succeeded in trapping her and killing most of the people in the town. I didn't want any of you harmed, so I didn't try it before, but now I believe I can defeat her. The town was silent, waiting with a bated breath for him to continue. Soon we will be free of this tyrannous demon for once and for all. We will show it that it can and will be beaten, and that no matter how strong it may think it is, love is always stronger than hate, courage is always stronger than fear, and vengeance will be ours for all the deaths of our loved ones. The crowd cheered. Well, Sean's heart broke. Once again, he waited for the crown to be silent. I will go out past the trees, and I beg that no one follow me. If the demon does not see you, it cannot blame you for the attack, and you will be safe. Understood? The crowd mumbled their agreement. Go to your houses now, go inside and pray. That is all I need you to do for me. The crowd dispersed. Only the town council and Rose stood before him. Do you know what you're doing, dear? She said softly, while hugging him. With all my heart. And I wish you good luck and Godspeed. Thank you for everything, Rose. You are my lighthouse in my rough seas. And I'll be again and again. You just go and kick that demon's butt, okay? He smiled at her. Took the box and carried it down the street. Rose waited until he was out of earshot when she put her hands on her hips. Well, if you're going to follow him, my dear, you might as well go and see it through. <laughs> Sean crawled from her hiding place. <laughs> now, how did you know that I was there? 
Call it female's intuition, dear. Now go to him. He'll be staring through the gates of hell. He'll need you at his side. Sean hugged Rose and softly patted off Diago. She passed Rose's house and looked for him. He said something about being on the other side of trees, so she listened until she could hear something to point her in the correct direction. Maveti elebra. She heard through the trees. It was a girl's voice, the voice she recognized immediately. Fandoma was speaking to her Iago through the bounds of the book. No wonder she had that dream in his house. The book was being kept there, she realized. She followed him through rows of trees until eventually the edge of the thin forest emerged. Staying out of sight but within earshot, she crouched down and observed. Maveti elebara. Don't be too eager to be released, demon. I have some vengeance to take out on you. Vengeance is good. It means you're more like me than you think, Draig. If I was like you, I wouldn't be killing you, would I? The voice in the box gave out a roar of laughter. I like your confidence. It would give me the greatest of pleasure in burning you as an example to these puppets of mine. Enough talk, let's finish this. Yalguk screamed and peeled off his shirt. Then lifting the top of the box, he held up the book and shouted, You are released. Come forth, demon, and let's finish this. Yalguk. Sean said to herself and closed her eyes in anguish. If he had to be killed there in the battlefield, she had no reason to live anymore. She didn't want to live an eternity here without him. She opened her eyes suddenly as Iago roared. His body flushed a deep red color and it seemed as though scales manifested on his skin. That's right, Draig. Show me your splendor before I destroy you. John saw Iago drop the book and a fire-like substance come from it and float into him. She gasped as Iago seemed to be on fire but realized he was not burned by the flames. Iago swelled in size and fell to the ground and shook convulsively. Clearly, this was an internal battle between him and the demon. Sean looked on as Hyaku changed from a deep red to black to orange to white color, almost as a holographic image before her. Crouching there for what felt like hours, the battle continued until suddenly he stopped moving, his color ashen. And her breath seemed to be coming from him. The air went deathly silent. No. No. Despite the warning in the pit of his stomach, Sean ran to him and knelt down beside him. She felt that there had there was no heartbeat and stroked his face, which felt as cold as death. I knew that you're still in there, Prince Iago of Night. She hasn't, and she won't get the best of you because you have something that she doesn't have, a heart and a soul. You cannot be dead because I love you. I love you. Defeat her. Suddenly the ground shook. 
dark clouds rambled overhead and the air went ice cold. The air was still silent and she could hear her tears dripping on Iago's chest. Iago, please get up. I need you here with me. Roaring, the demon left him and stood before her. The little girl of her dream. Sean got up and stood with her back to Iago. You will not claim him, she said in a voice full of fury. This town is mine, the girl said in a soft voice. And no Drake or no other will take it from me. No one asked to be here, you bitch. It was because of you that they are here now, and because of you that they suffered so much. If you had a bit of a heart, you'd stop this now. The girl looked, stood, hands at her side, innocent look on her face, and smiled softly. I have no heart, child. Neither will you once I'm done toying with you. You are an insolent speck of dust. You should have let me finish the, the drag and I would have been sated, but now I hunger for you too. Sean knew she should fear, but her heart was still firm. She was not shaking. She was not begging. For the first time in her entire life, she was fearless as she stood up on her own two feet and courageously met her death. If I'm going to die, at least I know that I died facing you, she said harshly. You are the coward who can only kill what's weaker than you. You're the coward who fears. What courage can cause a person to do? You're the sorry soul who has never felt love, happiness or forgiveness. I have felt everything. And I die knowing that I have met someone who I would walk the earth with a thousand times over out of love. And who I love with everything that I am. The demon roared and turned into a ball of fire. Sean closed her eyes and smiled. I love you, Iago, she whispered, and readied herself to feel the impact of the ball of fire. Suddenly she was flung sideways and a mighty growl stood above her. Iago had pushed her out of the way just in time to take the demon into him again. Roaring loudly, he ran into the forest. Iago! She clearly saw what he was trying to do. All she could do was collapse to her knees in emotional agony as he impaled himself on a thick branch in his path. A deafening roar pierced the air before the shockwave came and blasted down everything in its path. (laughs) 